It all started with the heated exchange of words between Wu-Tang Clan rapper Method Man and Slaughterhouse member Joe Budden, but soon turned ugly when Wu-Tang Clan member Ray Kwan's crew would physically assault Joe inside a dressing room during a tour stop. Ray Kwan, a prominent member of the Wu-Tang Clan, was reportedly acting on behalf of Method Man when he delivered the attack on Joe. It was 1998, and Wu-Tang Clan's 1997 album Wu-Tang Forever had been nominated for Best Rap Album. Although they ended up missing out on the award as it went to P. Diddy for his 1997 album No Way Out, they were flying high as a group. The unconventional use of dubbed kung fu audio with intermixed samples from classic soul records, the tracks were littered with pop culture references and their Staten Island slang, taking the listener to a lesser visited borough of New York. The feeling of 90s New York is forever immortalized in Wu-Tang's debut record Enter the Wu-Tang Clan, 36 Chambers, which was released in 1993. The album raised the notoriety of not just Wu-Tang as a group, but also helped launch their successive solo rap careers. On the other hand, Slaughterhouse was supposed to be what the game's been missing in 2009, a corrective to a hip-hop scene that had grown far less lyrical. But really, there was something to ponder that a group with a history of label politics and a love for rhyming, joining forces to commit the sort of industry shakedown that none of them could achieve on their own. That night at the Los Angeles stop on the Rock the Bells tour, Raekwon went in with an American Music Award nomination in his bag as a member of the Wu-Tang Clan. Both Budden and Raekwon performed in New York, Raekwon in Staten Island Park, and Joe Budden with his group Slaughterhouse at the Canal Room. Raekwon was set for the main stage alongside artists like Nas and Damian Marley, Cypress Hill, Mos Def, Ice Cube, and The Roots. Slaughterhouse wasn't set for the main stage, but the independent hip-hop stage with RZA, Jizza, Mickey Fax, Slum Village, Evidence and The Alchemist, and M.O.P. For the most part, they kept the tension at arm's length, but the battle between them and the larger one from which it stemmed revealed a clash not only of egos, but also of generations. In May of that year, Vibe Magazine presented a fan-voted online bracket to determine the best rapper ever, the sort of content intended to stir debate. Joe Budden, speaking in a video posted online, made some disparaging comments about Method Man, who was ranked above him, leading to a bunch of conversations in radio interviews and YouTube videos. Months prior to the performance in LA, there was an encounter between Method Man and Joe at Jones Beach, Long Island. Method Man went to the beach and saw Joe Budden doing push-ups there. He was surprised to see him but Joe Budden came up to him and said something in his ear. So he's trying to say something in my ear, Method Man recalled. I heard a couple of words, but then I see this white boy filming on camera. So now my focus is there. I don't even hear what Joe's saying. I go to snatch the thing out of his hand. Now I know the wolves are hungry because they start pounding on me. Stop, stop, what y'all doing? We're in Long Island. Like every other feud, this one has two points of view of what actually happened. The way Method Man remembered it, He'd warned Joe Budden after their conversation that if any other slander were to come about his Wu-Tang brothers, there would be nothing he could do for him. Me and Joe, after that whole thing happened, they disappeared. Smart. Good. You should. I would have done the same stuff. I go to walk back towards the van like, Joe, I want to talk to you. Where are you at? Okay, I'll go over here. We walk over there, we go behind the van. Now, Joe, you don't know this. The whole time you were talking, I was going to snuff you. But the reason why I didn't, in that moment was because you said some real stuff. Now, I don't know exactly what it was word for word, but it was definitely something that made me think in that moment. Joe's a very smart dude. Chess, not checkers. Method Man clearly wants us to believe that he didn't want any kind of trouble. He totally acknowledged Joe Budden's talent and authority as an artist. He was not even bothered by Joe claiming that he was better than everyone else on the list published by Vibe. Method Man said at the same time, they thought I had a problem with Joe Budden saying he's better than me. I ain't got no problem. You supposed to feel that way. My problem was everything after that. I'm like, Joe, I don't F with nobody, leave me alone. This is me being my introverted self. In the Math Hoffa podcast, Method Man clearly stated that all the things Joe Budden did were unnecessary, saying, it got to a point where I'm talking to him like, you a talented dude, you don't need to go this route with all that dumb stuff. But I'm telling you, after this moment, if there's any more BS, my hands are tied. I think he came from that environment where that's what people did. But it was never taken to a point where somebody put hands on somebody. You know how people talk amongst each other and stuff, F you, this and that. In a different kind of setting though, fighting words, period. Joe, like I said, he's just a smart dude and that stuff could have been so avoided because I spoke to him. Me and him spoke, he knows this. 
Method Man elaborated that from there, saying he sought to defuse the situation once and for all, but claimed Joe kept ragging on his Wu-Tang affiliates. I don't know if he acknowledged that stuff now that I think about it. I don't think he did, because later on that day he did some kind of interview or something like that, or some freestyle or something. He named Inspector Deck and he named Ray. It was at backstage of the venue where Mickey Fax and Joe were in a room doing a video. Now, Raekwon was not involved in this at all, but he sure was involved with his Wu-Tang brothers and picking up a fight with one of the clan members meant picking up a fight with the entire crew. As Joe Budden kept on making comments about Method Man's position and ability as an artist even after the warning and talk he had with Method Man, Raekwon stormed into the room with six tall, big dudes, and he was definitely there to confront Joe and to remind him that he wronged the wrong people. As they spoke, Raekwon wanted Joe to apologize and end the beef between them. But Joe was supposedly being stubborn and tried to justify his words to Raekwon and his people. This infuriated Raekwon and he threw a punch right under Joe Budden's eye. Although Joe kept claiming later on that Raekwon threw his hand and missed only to hit Joe on the shoulder, but everyone backing the Wu-Tang Clan claimed that Raekwon was a big dude and it was a hit from him that was enough to injure Joe. Plus, you could see it. Them dudes came in here with a goal. Joe Button said during the webcast. The goal was to catch the blog king slipping and have the big 6 foot 4, 300 pound dude punch me in my eye. I guess it makes me look soft? I don't really know. My thing is, no comment man. Maybe the dude watches Joe Button TV, but I'm alright. I'm safe. Still sexy. I think. Eyes a little swollen. Joe was then seen asking a friend for some ice before continuing. Them dudes came in here like this was Staten Island. Did they know where we were? I guess in Ray's mind, they were going to come in here, punch me in the face, shake my hand, force an apology, then they were going to go off of that and perform and do a show? Was that supposed to be taking place? I'm a little confused by that. Mickey Fax did a web show of his own that Sunday detailing his account of the incident. We were just chilling. Ray came in on some peaceful stuff at first, he dabbed everybody. He dabbed Joe. He was dumb peaceful. He took a seat. When he took a seat, everything changed. What happened between Joe Budden and Raekwon was their business, said Chang Weisberg of Guerrilla Union, one of the organizers of Rock the Bells. They definitely did not want anything between them to impact the show and shared their regret that it could have had a negative outcome. In the end, I'm glad that Cooler Heads prevailed and that they were able to work out their differences and continue their participation with Rock the Bells. We're grateful for their efforts to keep things moving in a positive direction. It could have been very ugly and I'm proud of their willingness to put their differences aside and handle their business professionally. However, Mickey Fax said the point of contention backstage was that Raekwon was not too pleased with the video clip that he and Joe Budden shot in Boston on July 18th of that year. In the vlog, Joe Budden apologized to Method Man, but warned any of Method Man's affiliates not to speak on his name. After all that heat sorta of died down in a podcast held six months prior, Joe Budden claimed he was listening to Method Man's account of the situation and he realized some things. Initially, after he heard Method Man talking on the Math Hoffa podcast, he thought Method Man got the timeline of the events wrong. According to Joe, the problem would not have escalated this far if a video of him saying something offensive about the Wu-Tang Clan members' names in it didn't resurface. He said, That's an old interview, and again, still to this day, yeah, might be to this day, because he just said that he didn't. Know how the internet worked and stuff? Like, yo, this was done. But this coming out right now don't mean this was done yesterday, right? Yeah, I've had instances like that where something come out on the internet and they just thought it was the last night. Things between them evened out quickly and shows after the feud. Although Deck and Method Man were not officially on the following Rock the Bells bill, it was no surprise when both appeared at Jones Beach to support Riza and Raekwon, who was slated to perform. The clan brought the ruckus, really not the ignorance. They rocked the theater with a catalog of hits and didn't waste time dissing Slaughterhouse. At the end of the performance, Method Man told the crowd no one in the rap game could touch him or his brothers. Can't nobody touch the legacy. Our track record speaks louder than any of them dudes. Between the end of Wu-Tang's set and the beginning of Slaughterhouse, Method Man and Joe Budden were seen walking together in the parking lot. The two took their time quashing the beef. When Slaughterhouse, which includes Royce the 5'9", Joel Ortiz, and Crooked Eye took the stage, they publicly announced the end of the short-term feud. It will never be a beef with Wu-Tang Clan, Royce said. He then revealed the conversation between Method Man and Joe Budden saying the situation was squashed.